What's up YouTube, Eugene here, and I've got my top 10 favorite fragrances of 2020. And I've organized these as best as I possibly can. For those of you that are familiar with my channel, that watch my videos, these will come as no surprise to you. I'm sure a few of you will probably even be able to rank these in the perfect order that I will present them in. Um, you know, it did take me a little bit of time to organize that one, two, three position. And these are really, uh, they're, they're ranked in the order that I would most uh, preferably wear them from. So um, it is an end of the year list, something for me to give back to you guys. Um, I hope you guys had a wonderful holiday. Uh, if you celebrate New Year's, hope you have a safe New Year um, from your own home. But uh, yeah, I, there's a lot of things here from my comfort zone, from the brands that I love and respect and admire. Um, with the absenteeism of a Frederick Mull and, and a Hermes as well. So Frederick Mull didn't release anything, you know. He's given us a lot the last couple of years. Um, this year, I think he decided just to do that 20th anniversary uh, exclusive set. You know, there was that seven or eight pieces of uh, celebrating his 20th anniversary. Uh, Hermes, you know, there's there's nothing that came out of interest to me. There was that that Merve flanker, which was like, hmm, okay, sure. And, you know, didn't interest me a whole lot, but here's here's my list. Here's the top 10 things that most excited me for, for 2020. Um, so number 10 is Tom Ford's Beau De Jour, which is a classic, uh, masculine take on a, a fougere and a really good one at that you know hopefully uh, Tom Ford can bring fougeres back to popularity to style and I really like this because it does have that classic take on uh, aromatic spices fresh spices dry spices particularly a rosemary a really well done rosemary it's almost like a He's overdosed the rosemary and it gets a little bit animalic on me, just dry and oily, uh, very spicy, um, a little bit of citrus there to contrast the woods, the patchouli, the oak moss. It's, it's quite green and sparkly and it does give me that kind of um, soapy uh, shaving cream, barbershop feel, woodiness. So it's almost like um, walking through the forest to get to your barber shop. It's got that, it's got that really nice classic uh, fragrance uh, vibe to it. You know, it's got a nice lavender and patchouli in there without coming across as lavender and patchouli. It's much more abstract than that. So you, you really got to dig for it, but it is there. Nice soapy fougere. Number 10. Number nine, which was a, a pleasant surprise for me, if I can dig out a, a blotter, is Guerlain's uh, Patchouli Ardent. So another patchouli, and this is much nicer when you spray it on skin and wear it. And it is, you know, it is very, uh, it is very aesthetically in line with the rest of the Absolutes Dorian. I think it takes... Uh, bits and pieces from here and there. It's a very fresh uh, figgy rose and patchouli, but it's got notes of, it's got leather, it's got spices, um, smoky, somewhat green. It does have kind of that, that BO effect, that sweaty cumin. So it fits in really nice with the rest of the, uh, with the absolute story and it's got that really nice you know that bluish almost mixed blue and turquoise color bottle there really good really nice fragrance uh, Middle Eastern vibe so Middle Eastern um, fragrances are really taking the Western world by storm more so now than ever before and you know that's that's never been more apparent then with Christian Dior and um, we've got Oud Rosewood here, which has, I'm really coming along with this uh, more so than when I first got it. When I first got to know, it was just like, hmm, here's another woody fragrance. Um, I, I still, 
you know, I still expect more from Dior when I smell this and wear this. It is nice. It is very pleasant. But, you know, from Dior, from Chanel, from Hermes, I, I do hold them at a higher standard. And I think this, if this was from Dolce Gabbana, you know, that would be absolutely fantastic because we would be getting much better things from Dior. Um, I, you know, there's times where I still am underwhelmed by this. Uh, so it is, you know, it, there's some fruitiness, some woodiness. To me, it's mostly leather. It's almost like a, a more streamlined leather oud without, you know, the balls, the harshness to it, the um, challenging aspect. So it's like they took, you know, they took away leather oud from us. They, they stripped it down. They gave it a tune up and they brought it back out um, in this really streamlined uh, oud rosewood. It is a little bit rosé. You know, I wouldn't call this floral by any means. It's mostly uh, balsamic leather and some spices. It's really got no kick to it, no harshness. It, it doesn't come across as Middle Eastern as, uh, you know, the main, maybe the name implies oud and rosewood. I don't get any oud. There might be a touch of smoke to this, but as far as oud, uh, no. Oud is, oud is very uh, perceptional here. In, it's perception, basically, unless you're wearing real oud. So it can mean anything, but uh, for the most part, oud here means smoke or... Um, uh, smoking wood chips but you know it's got some smoke notes it's not enough for me to consider it oud however I do like it but at the same time I do expect much 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 more from Christian Dior uh, so number seven from Guerlain again this is Iris Toreffi which is Guerlain's take on Iris and the supporting note of coffee which comes across really dark smoke smoky almost like a, a roasted coffee and i do like this because it's a it's a great great theme on iris it's uh waxy cosmetic -y, lipstick -y iris very smooth uh green it's got some green spices in the opening does have that coffee blend and uh you know a little bit of leather but it's a very soft fragrance somewhat powdery very french that's what i like about it it's not gimmicky french it's it's french it's guerlain it's very nice crafted beautifully i do like that a lot all right now we got another christian dior and this is rouge trafalgar which is a fruity Shepra, a fruity patchouli, if you will. And it is, it's kind of surprising that I have this on my list. And it is kind of, you know, again, gimmicky from Christian Dior. I would leave this to, I would leave this to other brands like Dolce Gabbana or YSL. This would be kind of like um, Chanel doing Pink Sugar or Guerlain doing a fragrance with Angelina Jolie as the face of it. Oh wait, they actually did do that. Right, so, you know, this is Louis Vuitton at the helm of, of Dior and Guerlain. It is a nice fragrance. Um, this is really more gimmicky than anything else. But it is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of, uh, it, it's fruitiness. You got your citrus, your mandarins, and your grapefruits a little bit sour, contrasting your fruity notes. Um, a really well done strawberry, uh, some dark cherries. In, the, in a very sparkling fashion. So it does have, you know, as much as it is fruity and citrusy, it does have a little bit of heft to it. You know, there is substance to this. It's not just a boring virtually. There's that nice sparkle. There's a sugar note. You get a nice uh, contrast of all that with that patchouli in the base. And it just kind of really has this nice sizzle on skin. I like the way this wears more than the scent itself. So this is like, um, there's something about this scent that really contrasts nice on the skin and it's got a really nice pop. And that's really why I rate it so high. It's not, it's not for the genre. I'm not crazy about, you know, for chulies and that sort of thing, but there's just something about it that wears really good. 
That's number six. This is five, one, two, three, four, five. And you're gonna notice the theme here. They're all woody orientals. This is Spice Blend. This was released, I believe it was released last year. It was late last year. It didn't come to Canada since uh, till early this year. That's why I include it in this list. For me, it's basically a 2020 release. And I know this gets crapped on a ton in, you know what? I, I know why it gets crapped on because my bottle had actually crapped out. This is, there's like literally nothing coming out of here. This is my second Christian Dior bottle to do this this year. The other being my um, original Udis Vahan where the sprayer just stops working, which is unfortunate considering the price and the cost of these. But I do like this a lot. It is a woody oriental. Uh, it's got that that bay rum accord in the top which i don't like i don't like boozy scents i just again find them kind of gimmicky um that quickly fades away and, and you get that kind of waxy cosmetic -y bit um softly it's a subtle waxiness to it uh the spices start coming out i get the cinnamon and um i believe it's nutmeg and pepper and, and clove which transits transitions into a nice patchouli ambery base with some incense and it's got it's got kind of this ambery churchy vibe to it slightly resinous but i like this a lot to me it's very wearable and that's why I like it's not challenging at all and i kind of place it in in line with uh dior's other woody orientals with uh santal noir mitza and ombre nui and i would place this right under mitza to be honest i'm not a fan of santal noir I do like Ombre Nui, but I find Spice Blend has a little bit more substance to it. All right, so let's move along here. Number four is from Gucci, a Midnight Stroll. And I'm absolutely obsessed with the uh, Gucci's new Alchemist Garden uh, exclusive collection. Their, their private version of you know Chanel's Les Exclusives or Dior's uh, Privé or Hermes's Hermesons, um, Guerlain's Parisiennes or Arts and Materials. So it is exclusive. It is a little bit harder to find. You know, there's not many folks talking about these. The packaging is, it's amongst some of my favorite bottles in all of perfume. I do love all the Eau de Parfums in this collection. I'm not very familiar with the oils quite yet. Uh, you know, outside of this, there are a bunch of the a bunch of these that I really love. But this is a midnight stroll, and to me, this is absolutely one of the best reference uh, frankincense perfumes, liturgical perfumes, incensey perfumes. Very dry, smoky, like smoke. I just get like black plumes of smoke coming from this. It is thick very resinous very spiritual i feel like i'm in a you know a cathedral a very gothic dark cathedral it's dry it's dark even the lights are turned off you know you have those leather bound books woody pews dry and dusty um there's that fur balsam it's got that sweetness from the fur balsam so a very uh, natural sweetness there's no candy or, or cotton sugar in here, any of that kind of goofiness. But I absolutely adore, I love this. I love what Gucci's doing. I love what Alberto Morias is doing with Gucci. You know, I think it's um, amongst some of his finest work and he's released, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of perfumes. But, you know, it's, it's kind of like that saying, uh, it, with yeah finer with age you know you get better with age so there's proof the proof is in the pudding okay so next number three is from louis vuitton and this is alberto Marias's partner in crime jacques cavalier and this is um nui defoe again uh woody oriental kind of the same theme incense but different it's not very churchy it's not liturgical like uh, the um a midnight stroll this to me is more pine sap it's more christmas trees on fire if you've ever chopped down a christmas tree or a balsam fir or any kind of fir um, and you've got that sap on your skin and you smell it there's this sparkle to it there's this sweetness 
um, the resin, it, it, it's incense-y, you know, Christmas trees to me smell very incense-y. And this is what I get from that. But not only is it incense, it's a little bit dirty. It's got oud in it. It smells like a very good high quality oud to me. You know, from what I know as, or what I perceive in Western perfume as oud, this is amongst some of the best. It's It's got that skank factor. It's got a leather accord to it. It's quite green and earthy, smoky, very smoky. And um, it's really refined what I like in my, in my, in my perfumes. To me, I love perfumes that are both conceptual, um, but also, you know, they need to be, they need to be wearable. If, 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 if it's just concept and it gives me a headache, I don't want to wear it. But again, if it's just uh, functional with no concept, I find that I get bored of them. And what I love about my designer exclusives or, uh, you know, the things that are in my comfort zone is I want them to be both conceptual and functional so and well crafted at the same time they need to be well crafted i love watching uh, a skilled perfumer at work and i find that's really what the top three here um really display is a, is is this really um a really good balance of functional and uh craftsmanship so this is great. Love this. Number two, here, here is the surprise. One and two. Number two is Lillian de Chanel. Um, again, I love this. It is that liturgical incense, woody oriental, nice patchouli in the base. Um, and this is very strong and smoky. And it does have what I perceive as Western oud, like smoking, um, smoky wood chips, almost like somebody in, in one of my recent videos compared it to Agar Iben from, from Hermes. And yes, I agree. That is very uh, smoky. It's like smoked wood chips, but this doesn't have the sweetness of uh, Agar Iben, which has got that sweet fur balsam, but this does have some sweetness in it. It's more uh, a sweetness coming from, let's say, uh, almost like a a caramel or a, it's not praline. It's caramel or tonka. It's almost like a scorched tonka or caramel. Um, I find that same caramel in sycamore. I find sycamore to have this odd caramel note. And I think they almost taken that caramel from from Sycamore and amped it up here. Uh, it's not sugary sweet. It's almost like a more natural caramel smelling. And it, and it fits, you know, perfectly into this composition, giving that smoked, dry, crisp, uh, burnt woods, a little bit of sweetness. It's like scorched woods. I also get that, um, you know, that Chenelade, that Chanel, um, that, that DNA of, uh, that floral, waxy, balmy cosmetics, but it's also very scorched, like scorched lipsticks. A nice bitter rose in the tops, contrasted with the uh, citrus, but very churchy, a very resinous, smoky, dry. Um, got that, it's got that, uh, that abrasive patchouli in, in the base, um, golden hues of amber. Uh, but it's all, you know, it's all really refined to, to Chanel's, um, the way Chanel does things, the way we know Chanel to be. So, you know, it's both conceptual and functional. I can wear this. I know a lot of people say it's not for every day. It might be a little bit too bold or daring, but, you know, I don't, I don't think so. I think for me, I can, I can wear this almost on a, a daily basis, you know, one or two sprays. I wouldn't go all crazy on it, but I think for me, you know, uh, I think I'd be much more comfortable in this every day than I would, let's say, Queer de Russie. But there you go. All right, number one, my number one uh, fragrance from 2020 is from Gucci's Alchemist Garden. This is Hortus Sanitatis which has absolutely blew my mind. Uh, Hortus Sanitatis 
is the garden of health. That's what the translation is. And when I wear this, when I, you know, when I study it, I totally understand what they mean by that garden of health. Because in here I get band-aids, I get um, cream, ointment cream, you know, to put on before the band-aid. It's a vegetal, you know, like stuff that grows in the garden, all healthy stuff that you'd find in a health store that would help you recover. Um, in the, you know, I think the timing of this fragrance is perfect, the garden of health. In this year, 2020, with all that we're going through, um, this is absolutely, it's just like the coincidences are mind numbing. I do get this kind of mentholated vibe, which, you know, I see in the, in the color of the, the bottle. It's, it's got that turquoise, turquoise blue to it, you know, which looks kind of mentholated. This is mentholated, like a Vicks Vapor Rub, like a, a polysporin cream. It's got this weird fishiness to it. Um, not quite aquatic, it's just like dry fish. So it's like taking a, a handful of uh, ointment, uh, ointment cream, um, what's that orange stuff you'd put on? Iodine maybe, some iodine, which is mentholated as well. Vicks Vapor Rub, Polysporin, just take a, a handful of that, goop it on, and stuff it inside of a dry fish. And you know, that's, that's what I smell, all in this kind of this vegetal accord. And um, and it dries down to, again, this woody oriental. I get this really nice uh, camphorous patchouli, uh, abrasive patchouli, very ambery, incensey. It does have that resinous uh, churchy accord, very similar to Le Leon and the Midnight Stroll and Spice Blend, which I think has kind of become this I don't want to call it a fad because this is all really coincidence more than anything that uh, all these brands have released uh, these these genres in the same year, unless they know what each other is doing. But this is this is kind of what's in right now. Um, Hortus Sanitatis, my favorite release of the year. All those notes they do kind of kind of strange and bizarre, but um, oddly they work. You know they don't smell as disgusting as all that sounds so um, I love this I love everything about it I love the packaging I love the cat there the logo you got the nice cat there I love you know the whole line to me is fantastic uh, virgin violet I think it's a great um, woman's handbag the whole thing is you know one of the best uh, cosmetic -y, makeup -y, handbags that I've smelt in all of perfume. The amber is really nice, Eye of the Tiger, a very nice smoky vanilla, somewhat, almost like a gourmand smoked vanilla. Uh, yeah, there you go. My This is my top 10 of 2020. Um, let me know what you guys have uh, enjoyed discovering the most this year. I always love hearing what you guys have discovered and what you're wearing. Let me know what you think of my my discoveries if you have any questions I'd, I'd love to hear them anyway if you haven't please subscribe so many of you're watching without subscribing um we're always talking about fragrance here more on the serious side i would say we like to have fun once in a while but yeah don't forget to su subscribe like this video and we will see you soon thanks for watching and uh, take care of yourselves